Who owns the news? Who owns it? And when I say the news, I mean anything you don't know that you want to know about your world or your country, your city, your state, your local high school track team, your entertainment options for next weekend. Who owns all that information? Who controls its flow? Uh, certainly, they got a piece of it. The reason I ask is that the professional purveyors of the news, the businesses that produce it, are all over the country now under attack. The president attacks the news media on a daily basis as a personal fetish. Uh, and locally, local television stations around the country, many of them are now required to read political statements forced on them by their owners. And daily newspapers all over the country are being strip mined by a particular form of capitalism called distressed asset investing. Now, the threats on the national level are better known. Uh, everyone feels free now to accuse news organizations and news reports they don't like of being fake news. We have uh, hackers who create actual fake news, and our social media sites can't seem to tell the difference. So at every level, the news, our free press, is under attack. And now, it's happened right here, in our backyard, at the Daily Camera. Uh, for those of you watching in the future on uh, your uh, air taxis, uh, the camera was a daily newspaper in Boulder back in the day. <laughs> so as you may have heard, the Daily Camera editorial page was recently censored on orders from its parent company, an editorial warning about a threat to its existence was killed. The editorial criticized the owner of the camera, which is a hedge fund in New York City, for draining the business of cash at such an aggressive rate that the survival of the newspaper is now in doubt. It pointed out that this particular hedge fund, Alden Global Capital, has as its business model taking exorbitant profits out of businesses that have declining revenues as it is. This resembles nothing quite so much as a mob protection racket. These uh, corporate enforcers show up at the business, they take their cut off the top, 20% of uh, gross revenues, more or less, then they zoom out again, and they leave the local managers to figure out how to keep the lights on. Well, if your business is suffering declining revenues year after year after year, the only way you're going to do that is to cut, cut, cut. And that's why the Daily Camera and its staff, along with the Denver Post, and the Orange County, California Register, and the St. Paul, Minnesota, Pioneer Press, and the San Jose Mercury News, and the Boston Herald, and dozens and dozens of other daily newspapers in our country keep getting smaller and smaller with every year. There was a former news editor at the Denver Post who put this more succinctly as he was resigning. He said, the Post is, quote, being murdered by its owners. Now, the hedge funds, and there's other hedge funds than Alden are involved in this distressed asset business. They say they're just basically like every other newspaper owner. Revenues are declining, and therefore cuts have to be made. But that disguises the actual fact that there are newspapers where the owners are taking much more modest profit levels and reinvesting the difference in new revenue streams trying to cobble together a sustainable new business model for these journalistic enterprises. 
what the uh, hedge fund does, of course, is quite the opposite. They call these people vulture capitalists for a reason. Their business model has nothing to do with sustainable or long-term growth. Their business model is specifically to drain as much cash as possible, as quickly as possible, from the distress asset and then move on to the next one, often leaving little more than a carcass behind. This process turns into something like a con game in which the subscriber is the mark. As the product shrinks, the subscription rates rise. And this is a cynical and very intentional strategy based on using the loyalty of the customer against them. Long-time subscribers are notoriously reluctant to give up their newspaper habit, so they, many of them senior citizens on fixed incomes, end up contributing more and more of their cash to the hedge fund profit machine while the product they're buying deteriorates. As the community storyteller, the Daily Camera would have been obliged to tell this story about any other 128-year-old local institution that was suddenly on the verge of collapse. In this case, because the story was about the paper itself, and because its owners are, uh, shall we say, publicity shy, the Daily Camera was prohibited from telling this story. And in that process, the traditional wall between the journalism enterprise and the business enterprise that is sacred to reputable journalism organizations everywhere was demolished. And the business side of the Daily Camera essentially invaded the editorial side and started determining what could be published and what could not based on the business interests of the owners. That model some people will tell you, is uh, just the way it goes. Libertarians and other defenders of free markets will tell you newspapers, like any other business, are subject to the forces of capitalism's creative destruction. Here's the problem with that. Newspapers are not just any other business. They are the only industry specifically mentioned in the Bill of Rights. That's because our founders thought a free press was an essential part of the democratic experiment in government that they were launching. When you talk to young people about this, they are more than likely to tell you they don't read the newspaper, they don't need the newspaper. They get the news altogether now on their phones. They seem to be under the impression that the Google wizard produces this news <laughs> on its own and miraculously for free. <laughs> or maybe Siri and Alexa have a sort of a side gig <laughs> where they're doing this reporting when they're not reading your emails to you aloud. Alas, no. Siri, Alexa, your Google Assistant are all doing the same thing, and that is aggregating existing content. They are not creating content. You see, newspapers' advertising model has been disrupted by Google and Facebook and the Internet. But newspapers' journalism model has been disrupted by no one. To this day, Nobody but the Daily Camera's latest sacrificial lamb is sitting through every interminable Boulder City Council meeting <laughs> for the purpose of reporting to the public what happened there. So the issue is not the device you use to read the news. The issue is who is putting the boots on the ground to uncover and report that news. 
And that's the problem. If the free market has its way and hundreds of newspapers across the country are drained of their assets and left for dead, then who will serve that function, the public watchdog function that the First Amendment protects? And the answer seems to be the special interests themselves. If you look at uh, social media, you'll see an unmoderated, uncurated information war in which telling the difference between fact and fiction is virtually impossible. When the news of the uh, Daily Camera censored editorial leaked out, the Boulder City Council passed a declaration supporting editorial independence uh, for the camera. Which was funny, because just a few months before, several members of that same council were just a little bit less enthusiastic <laughs> about editorial independence for the camera. In fact, when the camera failed to support one of their pet projects, several of them mused publicly at an open meeting about finding another communication channel that they could control. They yearned for a happier public image of city business in which every city council decision is wise and wonderful <laughs> and never is heard a discouraging word. <laughs> These people spend hundreds of millions of dollars in taxpayer money every year. And yet a number of them found criticism from the local newspaper inappropriate and impolite. So make no mistake, if the independent press goes away, vested interests, including the government, will jump in to fill that gap. Now, are there journalism models other than the daily newspaper that could take its place? Certainly there are candidates. There's the alternative weeklies. There's commercial radio and TV. There's public radio and TV. There's any number of online experiments up and running as we speak. But as advertising migrates to the web, commercial radio and TV face many of the same headwinds as newspapers. And none of those other models have yet been able to build a scale to present the sort of comprehensive package of news that good newspapers have been presenting for a century or more. It may be in the future one day they will be able to. But at this time, digital ad revenues are insufficient to build that sort of scale. Now, the Daily Camera's uh, censored editorial urged residents and readers like yourselves to rise up and make an offer to buy the paper and save it before it was too late. But developments since then suggest that the owners really have no interest in selling. Why would they? They're making enormous profits. They don't even bother to respond to criticism. Cash is king. And shame is in short supply. So who owns the news? Is it okay if small groups of secretive investors determine the fate of hundreds of daily newspapers all across the country? Or does the First Amendment suggest that we, the people, own the news? And that a free society requires a free fourth estate to shine that light on Areas that the privileged and the powerful may not want it shown. If, by chance, you didn't read about the censored editorial at the time and you're wondering why, the aftermath was another story that the Daily Camera's owners didn't want told. The publisher announced to the newsroom that the author of the editorial, the editorial page editor, no longer worked at the camera. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> uh, I was fired for publishing the censored editorial online uh, on an independent blog. Oh, 
Always nice to be cheered for being fired. <laughs> I did that because that's the journalist's job, is to tell stories that are important to the community and not to suppress them. The editorial advisory board at the camera, which is a group of local residents that writes for the paper once a week, collaborated on an essay protesting both the censorship and the firing. The Daily Camera refused to publish that as well. So these were acts of censorship by the shadow forces that now control many, many American daily newspapers across the country. You know, there's a famous story about Ben Franklin, who was one of the great editorial writers in American history, by the way. He's leaving the... Uh, Constitutional Convention of 1787 in Philadelphia, and a group of citizens approaches him and wants to know what kind of a government the delegates have created. A republic, Ben Franklin is said to have replied, if you can keep it. Well, it's not just our form of government that requires us to protect it. It's also the infrastructure around it that ensures a free flow of information and opinion, and speech. And so I ask you, what sort of a press do you want? What sort of a press do you need? You know what Ben Franklin would say? A free press, if you can keep it. So, can you? <laughs>